Hello. So I've told some people about how I pack my rebreather for flight. Just so as people know, this is what the rebreather would look like when it comes from the factory. This is what I normally dive around the UK. We can see we've got the breathing loop. We can see we've got our gauges, our inhalation, uh, our dilutant O2. In the back here we've got the actual rebreather. I've actually moved the scrubber across to this one for a minute. Um, but that's what it looks like. And as you can see with this, there's no way that's going in cabin baggage. This one, on the other hand, is that, but fitting into cabin baggage. And I'll show you how I do that. Um, no, you don't have to go and buy a secondary breather. I had one from when I first started uh, on rebreathers, and that was about 15, 20 years ago now. And so, as with many things, I've slowly acquired parts over time, and the part that I haven't got a second piece of is the actual brains and scrubber. But all of the putting it together, etc., I have. But this can mostly be made out of that. And I'll be explaining the additional parts that I'll need to get to make this, which doesn't come from that. And that will be a soft back plate, a harness for it, and the most important thing will be the frame that the rebreather actually sits on. And that frame, if we turn it around, is this aluminium piece that we'll get to see more of later. Okay, so I've moved the other uh, rebreather away and I'm going to take this one apart and slowly, well hopefully not too slowly, pack it in its flight ready configuration. So we've got our scrubber here, we're wanting to take the breathing loop off and at the moment I've got the scrubber empty so I haven't got any softener lime on it or in it, uh, that would be at the appropriate location. This one is the O2 feed that's going into it, I've already taken that apart. So, we've got our scrubber and the electronics. And this one goes into what will be my backpack, my rucksack. And this is a 40, 40 litre dry bag. Interesting point here is I've got clips. As you can see, I can turn this into a rucksack, and that typically goes with me. But right now, these clips are just going inside. and these are the regulators that would come out of the rebreather. Uh, if you've got spares, great, wonderful. They are standard scuba regulators, there's nothing fancy about these and in fact they are downrated from what a large number of uh, scuba regulators are. They don't have to be as performant because they're not having to deliver nearly as much gas to the diver underwater. I'm just capping these as I undo them because we don't want to get anything going into these as we're 
doing any elements. the dilutant and that one I'm putting into the carry-on bag same goes for the O2 and what I'm trying to do as I'm taking all of this apart is making it so as Anything that needs to be inspected is going to be in one bag and hopefully the other bag isn't inspected. And I've taken this through airport security a number of times so I've got a good idea of what they want to inspect, what they don't. And it's typically thick heavy metallic items that they're wanting to inspect. So anything that's a thick heavy metallic item goes in one bag. Security are going to be really interested in that bag. Anybody who's flowing with their scuba wrecks will know exactly what I'm talking about. Everything else I'm putting into the other bag. Now I'm just going to drop it in for now. I'll have a cut later where I'll actually pack it cleanly and you'll see what the whole lot looks like. But hopefully me putting these into the appropriate bag you can, if you're interested, take a look and see what goes into which bag. Now. For my breathing loop, I've got just a regular loop rather than one with an open circuit bailout. If you've got one with an open circuit bailout, aka the regs, actually in here, you'll probably want to put it into your um, wheelie bag. Yeah, I'm going to be putting this into my rucksack. So you can see I'm slowly taking this apart. ones. This is for my torch. It's just a metal sub bracket. All of the parts that I've got and will be uh, using here. I will be putting in a parts list in the description, uh, complete with a what is mandatory for this setup and what is optional. And I'll be putting, where possible, a couple of alternates so as people can make choices about what they want. So this piece here is the NARP 90 travel frame for the um, ambient pressure rebreather. I've got a single tank adapter on that. I find it brings the scrubber just forward so as it can sit better on the back. Now if I turn this over, the harness that I've got here is a Apex WTX um, soft travel back plate. Uh, Mare's have got a XR soft back plate, I think it is, that uh, will do just as well. Now these nuts are again one thing that's important. And you will have to get those. I've actually got two sets of nuts. One Okay, so 
So I've just taken the um, screws out and we can undo our PC. So what we've got here is the soft back plate. I've also got a pair of X deep weight pouches. Um, I decided to also get a couple of um, rings so as I can attach SMBs and other things like that. Uh, we've got our standard uh, D rings and I I like a one piece but I also like to get in and out and I find the extra release there gives me just enough room to get in and out. This forms the harness part of our rucksack and what we will have is a cabin bag and a rucksack. Sorry, that goes over there for right now. Our counter lungs then come back together and with these chunky metallic-ish parts they go into our um, wheelie bag. Our wings come into this bag. I know it's looking like it's starting to get full. I will pack it in a couple of minutes. And we've got our travel frame. And what happens with our travel frame? We put the wings of the frame into our wheelie bag. We keep the rest of this together we push it on and note these ones have got shorter spigots coming out of them they come in I tighten it back up Close that down and it sits on the back there with this. Right there. Right there. I can tighten it up and I use the crotch strap to go through here. Actually, the one wrong way round. It should be facing the back, but that will go through these and down the shoulder bands. So, I'm going to repack this instead of throwing everything in. Hopefully, this has helped. And once I've repacked this, so is it tidy in my bags, I will show you what this looks like all packed together. Okay, so I've just spent the last 15-20 minutes just tidying everything up in there. Everything that I put in that one during the video is in that one. Everything that I put in this one is in this one. With one exception, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that I typically carry my dive knife just here. This dive knife, while it has a blunt tip, it is more than six centimetres. It's actually seven centimetres, which 
is a little annoying. But what that means is that this goes into my checked in luggage. It cannot come into the cabin, unlike the rest here. So, we can see this is the strap that goes round the canister and using one of the ones around a cylinder to extend it keeps the bag from flopping around. At the top here I feed the um, one inch webbing for my crotch strap through the top handles through the single tank adapter down the top through some weight retainers back up so that keeps it nice and tidy it also holds this all together at the top it's held together with that two inch webbing at the bottom and then the rest of this goes on my back and I wear it like a rucksack so this comes in the cabin with me this goes in the cabin with me so I've got my rebreather in the cabin with me. I've had an incident where I flew abroad and my rebreather, when it was in the checked in luggage, did not come out on the carousel. I was a little panicky for a day. And then it, luckily I got a knock on the hotel room door and my rebreather was delivered. But that was potentially a diving trip ruined. All of my other dive kit, my dry suit, my fins, in short, everything that you could rent at the location goes in my checked in bag. Pro tip, the canister in here has got a bunch of empty space in it. So, great for underwear, great for socks, not so great for t-shirts because you can only put two or three. But, use the space. This one, that's all fine. The only time I've ever had a security guard at the gate, or as you're going through security, make any comment, was when I had my torch on there. It's an umbilical torch from Greenforce. And they commented, the battery's too big. Maybe you should have a smaller battery. But we'll let you go this time. It's a case of, well, I can't put the battery in the check-in luggage. You're not allowed to do that. So my torch goes in here. And any other stage rags, anything else like that, that I need to take. As you can see, I've still got plenty of room in here. Um, if I get comments about... Oh, this one's too heavy. This one's quite light. Between the two of these bags, they're under 30 kg. And cabin bags on a number of airlines, certainly the budget ones around Europe, have a 15 kg per bag maximum. Most airlines are, so long as you can lift it. So, that's it. That's my rebreather in the cabin bags. If you've enjoyed, like, subscribe, all of that sort of stuff. Bye bye!